Good evening, saints. This is Wilbur Robinson, pastor of the Grace Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith. We're located at uh, 1 Coleman Avenue in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. And we're just stopping by again tonight with another little nugget of truth. Just want to share with you. As we approach the end of the church age, uh, and obviously, it, well, it is obvious if we look at the uh, look at the world news globally and look into scripture, we see that we are right at the 70th week of Daniel, if you will. So we, we're just getting ready to get out of here. But the problem that uh, comes to me is that a lot of us people, church people, I'm putting it this way, I'm talking to church people, men and women who don't know God or profess God, they're going to have to at least come this far, but they, they're just lost if they don't get this thing right. But the point that I want to make tonight is that there really is only one way to God, and that's and that one way is a holy. It's a holy way. It's, there's, not a, there's not a lot of differences, and uh, uh, there are no other opinions, difference of opinions, about this way, uh, the Bible is clear. There's one God, and there's one Lord, there's one faith, one baptism, one, just one. And there's only one way to get to, to heaven, and we have to learn how to do it the Bible way, or we're going to be lost. And the reason the Lord laid this on me to drop this little nugget tonight is because there are so many people who believe that they are okay in their religious setting and not really looking beyond what they're comfortable with. And uh, it's just gonna be a sad state of affairs when the church is gone and these church goers are left here. They have to deal with the, the, the events that are gonna take place in the tribulation. So I just wanted to go over some things with you tonight. And look, these are just verses of scripture that, that come to me and I'm gonna to read to them and uh, just spend a little minute in them with you. But, the, the verses of scripture that we're going to go through tonight, it, 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 it really would behoove you to go in and search these things out for yourself. And it, it's important that you understand that we have to do this for ourselves. And Acts, it says, Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation. And the point that we want to make here is that it's, it is so vitally important that we are doing what the scripture calls for and not necessarily following the traditions of a church organization. You know, this cannot be about uh, favoring this pastor over that pastor or this congregation over that congregation. According to the Bible, we're all to speak the same thing. We're all to walk by the same rule, okay? and. If I'm in a situation where the pastor is not preaching the word to me, I'm going to be lost if I just stay there because I like the environment, I like the people, I like the pastor. I have to get to where the word of God is being taught. So that's what I want to go through tonight and uh, just share some things with you. Read them for yourself, but we're going to go through them tonight. Uh, the first one I want to cover is in Isaiah 35. And verse 8, and, you know, if you read it through for yourself, you'll see what the whole context is. But these scriptures I just want to pull out so that you can have something to go and, and look into. All right, Isaiah 35, and he's talking about this, uh, he's, he's talking about something that's going to take place way in the future at the time that he's speaking this. But he's, 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 he's going to be very clear in what he's saying. This is, this is the word to him from God to the people of God. It says, uh, and an highway shall be there, okay, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. See, it's, it's, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with the songs of everlasting joy upon their heads. 
they shall obtain joy, gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall be away. So this is a promise of the deliverance from the bondage of sin. Okay, now God is going to come to the people, and He's going to make a and He's going to introduce a new way. Okay, it's going to be called the way of holiness. And there's not going to be any unclean, any vile, any con contamination, anything on this highway. It's going to be a highway that is holy. Holiness is not a religion. Holiness is a way of life. It's not a denomination. Okay, it is a way of life. Holiness is clean, pure, and perfect because it's of God. God is a holy God. And God wants a holy people. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we have to make sure that we are lined up with this word to present ourselves to God, that living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, huh? which is our reasonable service. So again, Isaiah is telling the people of God that there's going to be a new way coming. Now, the point that I want to make now is that that way is here, saints. That way is here. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost was fully come, that was the introduction of the church. That was the introduction of the new way. Okay, now we're going to discuss some things a little bit more to bring, bring to your attention what that way is. But holiness is a clean lifestyle, and we can't live it without Jesus Christ. There has to be something has to take place to give us the power and the authority to rule over sin. Okay, because with, without this new way, okay, and what, without this way that, that the Lord is providing uh, here in Isaiah, it, 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 there's no way we can live holy. And the reason this word had to come to Israel, okay, God's people, is because they had the law, but they didn't have the power to live the righteousness in the law. So this is where this thing comes in. We have to be holy. And God has provided a holy way to present to himself a holy people. Okay, so let's go. We're going to go a little further here. Let's go to John, St. John. And we're going to be reading in the third verse. Uh, I'm sorry, the third chapter. And I want you to see what the Lord is saying to this uh, Pharisee, huh? A, a ruler of the Jews, okay? And uh, he had a question. He said, look, I know that there's something about you. You know, you're a different. You must be a man sent from God because no man can do the things that you're doing except God be with you. And Jesus responds to him and tells him something that is just completely, I mean, it has, makes no sense to him um, because he's thinking from a carnal mind, okay? So listen to this now. Don't forget this way. Okay, this way is a holy way. This way is God's way. This way is the only way that God can accept you and me into his kingdom and into his body. Okay, now listen to this, John. Three, I'm going to start reading the first verse. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night, said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, that word, those words, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto, you, unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Say to God, this is the key. This is the key. If you don't get born again, uh, you have to experience the rebirth. You have to experience that rebirth. And that rebirth is not something that comes naturally. It is a total spiritual event, okay? And only God can provide it for us. So he, he's, he's saying this to Nicodemus. Said, Number one, dude, if you're not born again, you're not going to see the kingdom of God because the Israelites were looking for this Savior to come in like uh, a Roman rule, a Roman king, you know, with a lot of pomp and circumstance because if he's going to be a king and a ruler certainly he's got to come with all the fanfare but this thing comes without observation this kingdom of god comes without observation you can't see it but you'll know it when it comes but you can't see it okay 
And again, Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, and unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, that was preposterous. <laughs> Nick knew it, and Jesus knew it. But Jesus also knew that Nicodemus was speaking from a carnal viewpoint. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. All right, saints of God, now listen to this, okay? You churchgoers, listen. Except you be born of water, that is the baptism, water baptism, okay? And uh, the spirit, that is a re- a, a, a recreation of the spirit that's in you. That old natural man, that, that uh, spirit of man is going to be taken out and replaced by a spirit of God. Okay? Yeah, this is the spirit of God. I'm saying A like there's more than one. But there's no only one. So again, he's telling him, and listen, and he says here, if you can't, if this doesn't take place, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So listen to me. Anybody who is claimed to be saved and has not been water baptized uh, the right way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission, the removing, the forgiveness of those sins that we were born into, okay? And if he hasn't been filled with the Holy Ghost, okay, the spirit of the living God, either that individual who's claiming salvation is not saved. There's only one way to be saved. There is one way to get into God's kingdom, one. And there's no other way. And listen, this thing about everybody is going to, or everybody's going to go to heaven. No, everybody's not going to go to heaven. The only way you can get into God's kingdom is to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Okay. Listen to Jesus. I'm going to read top five again. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Look, the Lord is saying, look, don't, don't think it's strange, Nicodemus. I'm talking to you from a spiritual viewpoint, and you don't quite understand what I'm saying, because you are looking at this from a natural. And that's understandable because you haven't been converted, so you don't know the spirit. All you know is the natural. So he's saying here, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. And he says, the wind bloweth where it lifts, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So look, the Holy Ghost is going to come. The spirit of God is going to come. It's just going to come, come like the wind. You won't, see, you won't know where it's coming from. Excuse me. But it's gonna come, and it's gonna it's gonna take take effect, and you'll know it, uh, dear brother. You'll know this thing. This thing takes place, so it won't be no surprise. You'll know exactly what's going on. Okay, now the okay. So we got that, and now the highway is here. Okay, the highway is here, and I want to go to uh, John the fourteenth, the state of fourteenth. Uh, John, Saint John, fourteenth chapter, fourteenth chapter. Sure you've heard all these before, but I'm just bringing them to your attention because the Lord gave it to me to bring to you. So I'm going to do it and leave it with you. Okay, where am I? 14 and 6. Okay, let me just read down to it. Okay, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot in here. And once again, I encourage you to go read these for yourself. Just go and read them for yourself and you'll get a full picture of what the what's going on around these scriptures. Uh, it says here in the 14th chapter, uh, let not your heart be troubled, first verse. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that I am, that where I am there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Listen, this is important because we're going to talk about the way. Listen. 
Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, this is what God was referring to over in Isaiah. Jesus Christ is the way. We must come to God through Jesus Christ. Okay? You have to do it that way. Listen to what the scripture says. I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't get in unless you come through Jesus Christ. Okay. Jesus Christ, we, we, we are born into the body of Christ. Okay. That's what we're talking about. That's what Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus was telling Nicodemus. You got to be born into this thing. Saints, you can't join this church. You can join your local church. If you want, if that's what they do, yeah, but that don't save you. Uh, you can take the right hand of fellowship if you want, but that won't save you. Those things don't save you. The only thing that can save you is Jesus Christ. And the only way that you can get Jesus Christ is you must be born into him. Okay. And it's very important that you understand that because if you don't pursue that, he won't come. He's only going to come if you call on him. And if you, if you seek it, okay, he that seeketh will find, okay? And if you knock, he's going to open it up to you. But you have to do the work. He's done his part. Look, when he was on the cross, and you know, when just before he, he gave up the ghost, Jesus said, it is finished. What's finished, Jesus? The way is, is now available to whosoever will, okay? So this way, okay, is the way of holiness. Jesus Christ was holy. He was perfect, he was completely righteous, and he was 100% man and 100% God. And he was holy and righteous. And that same spirit that was in him, okay, was the spirit that said, let there be light and there was light, okay? There's no difference. There's one spirit, and that's the spirit of God. And the spirit of God was in Jesus Christ. And Jesus was with God in the beginning, okay? And the word was with God in the beginning. And Jesus is the light of the world, okay? So again, he said here, let's let me read it again. I, I, look, I'm just dropping him, just dropping him. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, okay? No man cometh unto the Father but by me, okay? That's it. If you didn't come this way, you're not saved yet. If you didn't come this way and won't seek to come this way, you're not going to make it, okay? It's just the truth anyhow. And I don't care how long you've been in church. And I don't care what church you attend. If, look, whatever whatever title is on the door or over the over the, the over the door of the church, and look, that's that you make those decisions. But what inside that church, holiness is supposed to be applied. Holiness is supposed to be taught. Holiness is what people need, not entertainment. They don't need to run and jump and shout and go through the church emotions. They need to be saved. The only way that we can be saved is through Jesus Christ. Water baptism. Number one, repentance. We're going to hear that before we close. Number one, repent. Number two, be water baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the removing of those sins. And the Bible says you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? That's it. And without the Holy Ghost, you can't make it. Okay. That's the born again. That's what the good demons was just finding out from Jesus. Okay. Okay. There's a lot in there. Again, I want you to go and read it for yourself, but I just want you to hear these things that lead us to the way. Okay. I have another one here. I want to go to John, the 10th chapter of John. Let's go backwards. Let's go backwards. John 10, and let's see, we do John 10, we're going to do uh, verses 7 through 10. Okay, now again, we're talking about the way, okay? And this is what Jesus is, is referring to here. He's telling us how to get in this way, okay, and be on the right way. John 10, verse 7. 
Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Listen. Huh? There's no way you can be saved without this. You need Jesus, and you need to come to him the Bible way. You just can't come any other way. You can't accept anything else but what you're hearing today and what's written in this book the way it's written in the book. It's real important, Saint you God. We're closing in on the end of this age. And if we're not rooted and grounded in truth, we're going to miss it. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find passion. Okay. He goes on to say some good things down here. But you can read them for yourself. Let's listen to 16 verse. And other sheep have I which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. He's talking about the Gentiles. God said, look, look, I got you. You know, you, you are my, you're the ones that I've, I've chosen you. I've selected you. But there are others, and I'm going to get them. But they all got to come the same way. They all have to come the same way. And the way has been made. I am that way. I am the sacrifice that was required to free you from your bondage to sin. Now you have to come through me because I paid the price you belong to me and you have to do what I say do the way I say do it if you want to remain in the body of Christ. Okay then. Okay, one more. Let's go to Acts. I'm just dropping these off for you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time but I'm giving you something to go back and research for yourself because this is very important and your very life depends on this thing. Now, here we are in Acts, the day of Pentecost. They're having this feast at Pentecost. And uh, this is the day that the Holy Ghost fully came. The Holy Ghost came. And God had promised it, you know, but he hadn't come yet in, in the fullness, okay? So, when the Holy Ghost fully came, that was the introduction of the church, okay? Now, it says here, now Peter doesn't preach in here, but I don't want to go, I don't want to hold you up with, with all that. That's why I'm encouraging you to go back and read it for yourself. But I want to hear, I want you to hear what the Lord was saying here. Now, I'm going to start reading Acts 2. Uh, well, let me just read Acts, uh, Acts 1 first. That's important for you to hear. Verse 8, chapter 1, verse 8. It says here, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Okay. That power, the Holy Ghost is the power. What is that power going to do? It's going to give you power to live a holy life. You will have power over the power of Satan, which controlled your life before Jesus. Now, Jesus has come and given you life. Listen, while we were out there in the world, number one, we were in darkness, being led by the, 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 uh, the, the, the prince of darkness. And we were also dead men walking. Why, you say, preacher? Because Jesus is the light. Huh? He is the life. He is the light of the world, and he is the life. So if we're outside of Christ, we're dead. Okay, listen to this. The, uh, the, 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 the second death is the separation, eternal separation from God. There will be no interaction with God uh, when Satan and all unrighteous people get cast into hell and to have death and hell get cast into the lake of fire. That's the second death. Huh? The first death is a natural death. The second death is a spiritual death. You die out from God. God is going to be with his people and those who are lost are going to be tormented for an eternity. Okay, so That's the second death. So this Holy Ghost when it comes, but you shall receive power 
after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's that spiritual rebirth. Okay, here we go, Acts 2. I'm going to read 36 verse, down to 40. It says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Okay. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. This is the saints of God. Listen to this. This is, a, this is the best bit of instruction that Peter could have given these people. Because when they found out that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the question that they had was, so number one, they were cut to their heart because they did not want to crucify him. They just thought he was a fraud. So when they found out that he was indeed the Christ, the one that they were looking for, they were pricked in their heart because they were they, they, they were just upset because now what do we do? How in the world can we be saved if we kill the Lord of glory? And Peter said, look, all you have to do, number one, repent. And he, look, their reaction, okay, their reaction to the word of God was their repentance, not that broken heart, that cut heart. That's how that's what repentance is. When you run, when you find out that you're going contrary to God's word and you want to do God's word, it's going to cut you, brother. It's going to cut you in your heart. It's going to get pricked and you're going to want to find out how in the world can I get right. And you ain't going to wait for it to get right. Once you find out how to get right, you're going to get on it right away. Yeah, if you really, if you really cut, if you really repent, because see, repentance is more than being sorry you got caught. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more than that. Repentance is a repentance hurts. It, it hurts. It cuts. Now, that's what that purging is. That purging, purging. You know, that purging. It, 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 as you as you're growing in Christ, God, Christ is cutting things off. He's breaking things off. Sins and these little habits. You know, these little strongholds that had you. You know, the, the, he just what they're purging it. So the word will clean you up. But this is what happened on the day of Pentecost. When they heard that this man, Jesus, okay, was indeed the Christ. Many brothers, what shall we do? And Peter gave him an answer. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't accuse him of anything. He just gave them what they wanted. They wanted to know what can we do. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, how, saints? In the name of Jesus Christ, not Father, Son, Holy Ghost. No, that is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The name is what is necessary to move the sin. Huh? Preach what you're talking about. The name is where the power is. He said, I, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I am the one who died on the cross. And I am the one who died to remove your sins. So in order to have your sins removed through the water baptism, okay, then you have to be baptized in the name that died for you. And Jesus Christ is our uh, kinsman redeemer. He was God and man, okay? And he was able as a kin to mankind, he was able to pay the price to release us from prison, okay? So the name has to be applied, say to God, or you just went down and got wet and you came up with the same sins you went down with. Now listen, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the sins that you were born into. We were born into this world sinners. Even though we had not committed a sin in the womb, we came into when we came into the world. In fact, saints of God, that sin that was in us in the womb because it was comes from my father who was a sinner okay so that seed passed right on through to my adult life okay so here's we we and the only way that this sin can be removed 
is to be water baptized in the name that, re, that paid the price for my sin. That's Jesus Christ. And it's got to be Jesus Christ or Lord Jesus because there's a whole bunch of Jesuses out here, okay? So we don't want to confuse that with the one who died for us, Jesus, the anointed one, okay? It's, look, it's important. I'm telling you, it, it's going to have to be done this way or you're not going to be saved, okay? Listen, you know, uh, I know people do the sinner's prayer, you know, and they pray that prayer. But let me say this to you. If indeed a person prays that prayer and they sincerely mean that from their heart, they shall be saved. That prayer in and of itself does not save you. Uh, that's where that's where the confusion comes in. People leave that prayer thinking they're saved. The only way that you can be saved is you must be born again. How can I be born again, preacher? You must repent what you have done when you decided to go and do that sinner's prayer. But you must also be water baptized the right way in the name of Jesus Christ for the removing of that old Adamic nature that we were born into. And then when you get cleaned up, you come up out of that water, okay, with your old sin, when you went down in the name of Jesus Christ, okay, when you came up out of that water, your sins were left in that in that grave, okay, in that watery grave. When you came out of that watery grave, you had a clean slate. That's why it was necessary that the Holy Ghost come to fill that void. That old man was left in the pool, okay, or wherever you were dipped buried, there was left there, and now the Holy Ghost has to come to fill that void. And then the Holy Ghost is going to come and give you the power to resist the temptation to go back to what God brought you out of. And it's, it's necessary. It is necessary, and we're going to all have to do it. What did he say? How many people were he say to get baptized? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the removing of sin. That's what it's all about. It is absolutely necessary. It is not just an outward show of an inward uh, uh, expression or whatever, however they say that thing. No, you need it. You, you need it. Uh, yes, water baptism is vital. And without water baptism, uh, you need the water baptism and you need the Holy Ghost. Well, the process is not complete. Huh? Because look, when Peter uh, was preaching to Cornelius and his family, we won't go there, but he preached to Cornelius and his family. And while Peter was preaching to him, the Holy Ghost fell. Why? Because they they looked, they sent for Peter, they wanted to hear what Peter had to say. And they, they looked, they already had respect for God's people and for God. So Nick Cornelius was teaching his people about the Lord too. So he sent for Peter, Peter came again to preach and they found out that this word of God was not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles too. And they got so happy, the Holy Ghost fell, and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, that, 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 that's what's going to happen, brother. That's how you would know when this thing came into you. And the, and the, and the Jews that were with them, they said, look, they, look, we heard them speak the same as us, you know? So that was the evidence, okay, that the Holy Ghost had come upon them. But the point is, after they received the Holy Ghost, Peter said, now look, what hinders them from being baptized? So they took them and baptized because they needed to complete the process. Uh -huh. Go ye therefore in all the world, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have taught you, I'm paraphrasing. And the, and the ones who are baptized shall be saved. <coughs> so it's absolutely necessary. And some people say it's not. That's not true. The Bible says yes. Okay, let me just let me just let me just do this again. I want you to hear these things. Uh, uh, okay, I would I would actually I wanted to give you a scripture. Where they began to speak of that. Okay, here you go. Let me just read this to you. Chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, listen, listen, now, listen. The 
The Holy Ghost, the Holy, the Holy Ghost is now coming fully. Now God used to put put the Holy Ghost in and on His prophets so that they work for Him. You know, but He would have put it upon them, come upon them. But now the Holy Ghost is coming for everybody, whosoever will listen. And when the Holy Ghost was, I'm sorry, the Holy Ghost, when the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Look at this oneness again. One accord in one place. That means they were of one mind, the same mind. They were waiting for the promise that was given to them by Jesus Christ. Go back to Jerusalem, wait there until you be a new and powerful one eye. And they were back there praising God, waiting on this thing. Okay. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is what I'm talking about. This is a spiritual takeover by God. And he manifests himself through this, 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 and this, there are gifts of tongues, but this particular tongue is an evidence that something has trans, uh, transformed in your life. Something has, 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 has taken place in your life. Something that you don't know anything about. I'm, I'm telling you that what it is, but you not, you've never experienced this before. And you begin to speak in other languages as God gave them utterance, okay? Man can't teach this. You can't go to tongue school. Huh? This is something that God does, and this is your evidence. And when you begin to speak in a language that is unknown to you, and what happened, God will be here. God had witnesses. Uh, God had witnesses that uh, understood what was being done because they said, look, how here we these, uh, aren't these all Galileans, and how here we are? speaking in our, in our language and where we were born, uh, speaking the wonderful works of God. Uh, and, and look, so they say, well, God, this is what I'm talking about. This is a, this is a spiritual thing. It's, a, it's something that takes place in your life because you have given God your life. Uh, and as a result of giving God your life, he gives you this gift so that you can maintain that life that he's given you. All right, now, it's necessary. I'm telling you, it's necessary. And there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ, uh, to get on that highway that was there. Uh, and there's no uncleanness on it. Okay. Let me go see what else we got. Okay. All right. Well, look, there are other things in here. But also, before we close, I want to give you some uh, something else to uh, think about. Okay. Now, look, there's one way to be saved. Now, there's going to be some trials and tribulations on this one way. Because this one way, saints of God, has us going against everything that we know, everything that we grew up in, everything that we've learned before finding out about this one way. So once we were walking, with the crowd. Now we're walking against the crowd. Okay. The crowd represents Satan and his world empire. Satan is controlling society. Everything that Satan offers mankind here in this lifetime outside of Christ is opposed to what Jesus Christ wants for his people. That's why we're told to present our bodies. Uh, that body is the, the physical and the, the mental. We are to present our bodies to God. That's why he gave us this Holy Spirit in us, which gave us power over all the power of the devil. Nothing that God brought us out of do we need now. By God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Uh, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, that name again is Jesus, he will do it, okay? This, the, abide in me and my words abide in you. Uh, and you should ask what you will and it shall be done. This, this is, but you're gonna have opposition. 
because everything that you're going to be trying to do now that is right in the eyes of God, the devil is going to be coming against you with all the force that he can. And that's why we have to put on Jesus Christ, the whole armor, and then dress up in it because God's coming, the devil's coming after you. And this is real quick before we close. Let's go to Matthew. I'm going to read just a few things. I put a little title on this on this little session tonight. And I said, one way leads to God, and many ways lead to hell. And that's so true. And that's what Jesus was making reference to when he was talking to his Lord. This is this. The Lord is now speaking to his disciples. And all right, let me just read down. Let's see. I'm just going to read. Let me read. The, the, what we're looking for is seven, Matthew 7, 13, but I want to read 12 and 13 together. It's 12 through 14. I think. Okay, it says, 12 says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. All right, so he's teaching righteousness now. We used to do what we wanted to, two people. Now we have to do two people what we would have people do to us. Okay. Do we want to be, we want to be treated right? And we treat people right. This is what God wants. This is that new man that's on the inside that will help you do that. Instead of striking out, striking back, uh, and taking a selfish approach to life, we're going to be finding ways that we can help to be a, a blessing to somebody else and let God bless us in return. Okay, again, 12 verse. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would, that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophet. Here, listen, enter ye in at the straight gate. Uh, that's the narrow way. <laughs> you listen. For broad is the gate, I'm sorry, sorry, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in there. At. This is this. Huh. Look, and that look, and the, look, the, the wide gate has everybody going to heaven. Do what you want to do. You know, God is a God of love. He would never have anybody go to a place like hell and be cast into a lake of fire. Huh. Uh, they, look, some people don't even believe that there is a hell. Huh. And, you know, some people don't even believe that there is a God, but they feel like they're going to be all right when it's all said and done. Some people don't believe that there's life after death, so they feel like death is it, it's over. Well, the truth be, be, truth be told, there's, we're going from time into eternity, and we're going to spend one, one or the other. We're going to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus, or we're going to spend eternity in hell with Satan and all unrighteous people to be tormented in a lake of fire. And we're going to have a, a body that will burn forever, but won't be consumed by the fire. It's just going to burn. Goodness. You think about it. And enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way of holiness which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now listen, saints of God, listen to this. There are going to be more people lost than saved, but God is still going to have his number, because John saw a number that no man could number. So you take that number that God saw, that John saw, and you multiply that, I don't know how many times over, and that's how many more people than that are going to be lost. Because over in the book of Enoch, Enoch was asked, asked the angel, he said, look, are there going to be more people uh, lost and, and saved? And the angel said, yeah. Huh? That's why hell is getting bigger. I mean, we're going to go there. Let me just take it there real quick. But again, keep this in mind. It's, you look, look, there are a whole lot of ways. You know, look at that. Wait, just, just look at what Satan is doing out here. Look what Satan is doing. The, 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 the governments that are running the countries are crooked. Okay, uh, the, 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 you know, the things that would help the, 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 uh, the, the uh, gun lobbying laws, you know, there are too many guns, right? So people can shoot, you know, and they, and they have this, uh, 
these things where you, they you bring your gun in and you they give you amnesty or something, you bring your gun in, they give you a little surprise. But these people got so many guns, they can get rich just turning in one gun. <laughs> this one gun, take the money that they get from turning in that gun and buy another gun and just keep going back. The world is crooked. Look at the way people look now. They, look, the Bible tells us we're not to make any marks on these, these, these bodies, not because this is the temple of God. And the Bible says if any man defile this body, then, he, 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 then that person is going to be destroyed. And so look at the the the, 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 the uh, outbreak of of, of, of uh, at tattoos. Look at the the, uh, the uh, uh, earrings and nose jewelry and all these things. Look at look at the hairstyles. Look at the the, 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 the all the phony things that people put on themselves trying to enhance this old flesh. This is all from Satan. Huh? This is all from Satan. Uh, the, 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 uh, the now the, the, this this epidemic of, of babies having babies and, and 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 children being born out of wedlock and uh, men and women living together and not being married and then the ones that are married are divorcing and then remarried. This is all satanic. That but see people 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 believe that this is all right. Because the Bible says there is a way that seems right, but the end of that way is destruction. But, but there is one way that leads to Christ Jesus, uh, and that's the way of holiness. All of the other ways uh, are going to lead to your death. You think about it, Saint of God. If, if, if Jesus Christ, if, if everything that we were doing before Christ was okay in God's eyes. Then Jesus could have stayed in heaven and not have to come and pay this price and die for, for us. Uh, because we would have been able to handle salvation ourselves. But everything that we do outside of God's word is going to cost us our eternal souls. Okay, so think about it. All right, let me, do it. Let me get you out of here. Uh, so, yeah, you got that. Okay. And enter the end at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads it to destruction, and many of there be that go in there. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and there and there be, and there and, and few there be that find it. Okay. And then it's just telling you to be aware of false, of false prophets. So that's why the, that's what's going on in these false churches. These churches that don't teach this. That's false church. If, if, look, if that church is teaching Father, Son, Holy Ghost, baptism is okay, that's a false church. If the preacher is that you marry and divorce and marry, that's a false church. If, if, if it's okay for the young women to, 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 to be in, in, involved in fornication, and if, if it's okay if, if the deacons and uh, the assistant pastors and all those guys can get involved in with the women in the church or, or outside of the marriage, it's okay as long as they just come and pay their tithes and, and come and, and go through the church emotions. Huh? No, it's false. Huh? No, this is straight and narrow. It's straight and narrow. You got to walk this thing. Huh? Narrow is the way, but there's plenty of room for everybody. But the way, okay, the lifestyle has to be godly and holy. Okay, let me do another one. Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah, where was it? 5 and 14. I'm just going to read some things to you. 5 and 14. Okay, listen to this. Uh, verse, uh, Isaiah 5, verse 13 to 14. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men and are famished, and their multiple and their multitude dried up with thirst. Okay. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Why is hell getting larger? Because hell was not designed for man. Hell was designed for Satan and those angels that were cast down with him. But men love darkness rather than light. Satan's influence over man is more powerful than man's ability to resist 
that influence and that temptation and their deceitfulness. And he's lying to people and, and telling people that they're okay, they don't have to obey the word of God. That you know, God didn't mean everything that he said. You know, you know that's what he said to even in Adam and Eve. He said, Did God say, you know, no, God, no, 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 surely not, because God knew that what you be like God's, okay, you know, and good for people. So, you know, God was holding something back from him. But he didn't think, you're not going to die. You know? He's so, you know, look, that's why that fellow who has such a powerful influence in heaven. Think about it. Think about it. Satan was, uh, Lucifer was a powerful agent in heaven. And he was able to seduce those angels to follow him in a war against God and he was going to take over heaven. Huh? And look what happened to him. And he's down here doing the same thing. He has to, he look, he's just doing down here what he was doing in heaven, and he's going to lose again. But he's going to take a whole lot of people with him. Okay, so just hell is enlarged itself. Huh? It's look, one way to heaven, but a whole lot of ways to go to hell. All right, look at this. We have one more. Let you go. Let's go to St. John. Okay, say that. It was just uh, 3 and 19. That's what I want to go. I'm going to read down to it. It's 3 in the verse. I want you to hear is verse 19, but I'm just going to read down. Uh... All right, I'm starting reading the 16. Everybody likes 3, three and 16. It says, God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a good verse of scripture, okay? And it's true. That's why God gave his son. That's why Jesus came. He gave his life so that we could have life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's who is in us, Jesus' life is in us. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Everything goes through Jesus Christ. You can't get to God except by me. That's what Jesus said. You get everything goes through him now because he was the one that did the work to get God, get rec man reconciled back to God. And truth be told, it was God in Jesus doing the work. Jesus was just the vessel that God used, okay? So Jesus was a man, but he had the spirit of God in him, okay? So he got, it was God himself reconciling man back to himself. Okay, 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name, once again, the name of the only begotten of the Son. And listen to this. That's what we're saying. If you're not in Christ Jesus, you're condemned while you're alive. You're a dead man walking, okay? So you're condemned already because you haven't come to Jesus Christ to receive salvation. That's what we're talking about here, saints of God. There's only one way to be saved, and you must come that one way or else you will not see Jesus Christ in peace. Yeah, every eye is going to see it, but how are you going to see it? Okay, listen to the 19th verse. And this is the condemnation. Okay, again, I'm going to read these two together. 18 and 19. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, that light is Jesus. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. Yeah, hear That's what man, man don't, he don't want to come to God. He wants to stay in darkness because what he does, uh, he wants to keep doing what he does. The word of God shows him up. The word of God exposes him. That's why he hates the word of God. That's why you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you're in a warfare down here in this world because this world is opposed to everything that's godly, and you're trying to live a godly life in this world. That's why the Bible says you're in it but not of it because God has taken us out of the world. We're here. We're here going through it. But the Bible says that our lives are hidden in Christ Jesus in heavenly place. Okay. Okay, let me read 20. All right, says God, bear with me. I'm going to read something. Write down. I'm going to read 18 to 21. 
and then that's it. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. That's what we're talking about. So see, the light will show people that God is in us, and God will use the light in the believers to draw men out of the darkness into the light, just like somebody drew us. Okay, the saints of God, this is it. I just wanted to drop these off to you, and I encourage you to go back to the verses of Scripture. Uh, John 3, 3 and 6, John 14, 6, John 10, 7, 9, Acts 2, 38 through 40, and Matthew 7, 13, Isaiah 5, 14, and John 3, 19. And, then, you know, there's a Scripture that also says, uh, See. Oh, anyway, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is destruction or death. So, see, we can only come one way. Our way is God's side is filthy bags, our righteousness. So, that's what we have for tonight. I just wanted to drop that little nugget off to you. And I hope you got something out of it. And I pray that God will open up your understanding. If you're in a situation, and listen, the reason we say this, I'm talking to the church, and the reason we're talking to the church is because we look, we're tempted in the world, like we're just tempted. I mean, we, we, got, we got things that we still try to overcome. And only God's going to help us. But you have to stay in Him in order for Him to help you. Okay. So you can't think that you know, you're you not failing if you, if you stumble, because you're going to stumble. But what did they do on the day of Pentecost? They repented, okay? If you have already repented, if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, and you, are, and you have a mind and a desire to live for God, you just keep that mind, and God is the one who's cleaning you up. But if you are in a, in a, in a, in a, in a church that does not teach Bible, and basically, and listen, basically we have to believe that God is God, we have to believe that Jesus Christ was God's son sent to save mankind. We have to believe that we have to accept water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ after we have repented from our sins. And we have to believe that once we receive the Holy Ghost, that we have a new man on the inside who is able to keep us and save us and to, and, 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 and to complete everything that he's begun in us. And by faith, we live that life and we don't fall back into things that we used to do because the devil's going to bring them to your attention, but you're not guilty anymore. As long as you're in Christ Jesus, you're not guilty. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that walk in the light or walk in Christ Jesus, okay? So you don't fall for it. Huh? You're going to stumble, but just get up. Huh? Get up, ask God to forgive you and keep moving. Okay, that's it. God bless you. Hope you got something out of it. The Lord say so. We'll do another, just spend another little time in the Word. But until then, you stay with the Lord. Pray fast. Ask God to help you with everything that's weak and the things that are strong, you hold fast to them. Okay, God bless you.